Hey everyone, and welcome back to Candid Founders, where we give you a candid view of a growing business. And today, we wanted to share with you our first two months of our board pack. For this year in particular, we've been doing it for maybe about 12 to 16 months so far. And as a candid founder, we wanted to share with you how we're building, not because we know everything. One thing we do know is that we don't know everything. And more about how can we learn We know that there's so much to learn out there. And so if anyone sees anything that they think, okay, that actually needs to be polished, bear in mind that this is a work in progress where we're kind of building a new pack as we go. And we're also super open to feedback. Lucy and I are both two previous bankers and we're not being in the retail game before. So it's something that we're trying to get better at. We also know that retail has been done for 300 plus years. So I'm sure that there's someone out there that's got a better way of doing things. So if you do know anything, please do share with us. Um, we're super open to that. Leave it in the comments below. And so without further ado, um, our board has four people on it. Lucy and myself, I used to work as an exec at a large global bank and that's where Lucy and I met. And we also have two other people who are on the board, a partner from McKinsey, who's a super smart guy and another lady who's a CMO of a really exciting startup. I'm not sure if I can share the startup, um, all those people, so so I haven't. Um, and this startup lady who also ran, or is CMO of this company, uh, also ran uh, marketing for a large retailer as well. So hopefully there's bits and pieces that they're going to start dripping into this that we're going to learn from as well. Um, between the four of us, we try to use this board pack as an opportunity for us to grow strategically. As a small business owner, you do spend a lot of time doing and sometimes that is really good. Sometimes it's also, it means that you get really far down in the weeds. And that's something that we try to avoid. And this is the way that we do that. I would say that over the past yeah, 12 to 18 months, this board pack has given us some incredible insights. We've been lucky enough to kind of identify that wholesale was an incredibly big driver for us. We realized how important it was for us to you know, crack Christmas in the right ways. And the board pack's been a really important way of doing that. So without further ado, let's get onto it. So this is our Jan Feb board pack. Uh, slide two is really just kind of a reminder of who we are. Ten percent of our profits are donated um, to the animal on the sock, and we sell bamboo socks. We think that the world would be a much better place if every business donated ten percent of profits to a good cause. Could you just imagine? It would be it would be incredible. And so we're trying to do this not just because we think that. You know, it's a good way to share a business, but also to hopefully encourage other people to grow their businesses and potentially donate their profits as well. Today, I wanted to go through a bunch of different areas that we go through with the with the board. Overall business performance, a retail and wholesale business, product. We'll probably drop out financials, even though I've listed it here twice. Um, and that's just because I'm not sure of the best way to show you the financials without kind of sharing different people's uh, salaries, which obviously wouldn't be cool. So we've not been able to do that yet, but I'm hoping to do that in future iterations. So this was our first board pack of the year. We missed out on our Jan board. That's okay. Um, These things happen. But I wanted to summarize how did we go in 2022. And I think this did a really good job of doing it at a qualitative qualitative view. So we've really come along quite a lot from almost zero wholesalers to then 500 plus. Consumer business is going from strength to strength even with iOS 14.5. And product development is going through its own learnings. It's been previously externally, and then internally, then externally, and now it's back internally, and we think we've got the right solution. We still haven't nailed it on our stock management. We're using some ML tools to help us. Well, that's a fancy way of saying we've, we've outsourced it to a third party. And they've been giving us some really good insights, but we're still not super mature on how much are we ordering, when are we ordering, and making sure that we're always in stock at the right times. And then operationally, I think we're in a really good position with our 3PL. We use We Are Fulfillment, who are a a great third-party provider of our logistics. Um, But like everybody in the industry, we were really affected by the raw mouse strikes. And so we had to really bump up our costs over our core period, and that really hit us. We previously had some, some issues with our financials in terms of 
them being opaque. We would get it super right every year when we were doing our donations, but we just couldn't get a monthly view and that really shut us down. And so we've been trying to work hard to get that monthly financials. Then as we look into 2023, we thought we did swimmingly, to be honest. We were affected by quite a lot of marketing increase in our marketing spends and also our courier expenses at the end of the year. And so our net profit after tax stayed relatively the same. Um, And it's our clear priority this year to grow our profitability, which should hopefully also increase our, um, our donations. We donate on a gross basis, not a net basis. So that's, you know, before all of the other expenses around like um, people, salaries, that type of thing. And it's really just like, what's the core business um, after marketing, picking, packing, storage. And so the net pat doesn't affect our uh, our donations, but that's something that we wanted to, to touch on here. And so we were looking to really consolidate our wholesale activities. We think we've done swimmingly there. We're now into, I think it's probably like, I'm recording this in April, now up to almost 700 to 800 retailers. Direct-to-consumer, we've tried to quite aggressively pivot that to be a more profitable business before we were looking to really acquire every and any customer. And with a 10-pound you know, order minimum, or really no water minimum and customers ordering, you know, a 10 pounds worth of socks or just kind of one sock, we really were struggling to, to make that profitable. So we've had to, to increase that there. Product, we've bought that in-house and yeah, we've been really good with our delivery times. So we're aiming at about a day kind of less and our median at the moment I think is about, you know, half a day for our deliveries. If I look at quarter one, um, we've been successful at pivoting the business quite well, I think, from growth and to profit. So like I mentioned before on our consumer business, we've changed where we put our discounts, when free shipping comes in, and that's really improved things for us. On the wholesale side of things, we've also done a price decrease, which means that we're actually being more competitive in core markets that we'd like to be. So the likes of gift shops, um, clothing boutiques, these are businesses that probably wouldn't have looked at us previously with the wholesale prices that we had. And so we're comfortable that even though we've decreased that, we're starting to see a lot of first orders, in particular from those clothing boutiques at larger order sizes in the wholesale business. So that's worked. One of the pieces of feedbacks that we got from our board member actually, uh, the, the McKinsey gentleman, was that we were spending too much time on the qualitative side of things. And so this is just kind of to give everyone a flavor, bring everyone up to speed. But in future board packs, I'm hoping for us to be a bit more maths driven, numbers driven and have a way of looking at, OK, this is our goals for the year and this is how we're going to achieve them. These are the different constituent parts of it. And then I guess the most important part, are we on track? Are we off track? And what are we going to do to change that? Looking into quarter two, last year we did incredibly well in quarter two. And that was mostly driven from fair and anchor store incentives. So they were paying people £300 per order to order from us. So we were getting these huge orders from podiatrists and the like. And so if we compare ourselves to last year's numbers in quarter two, we're going to struggle. But we're really going to aim for flat. And so on direct-to-consumer, we have one of our biggest uh, days of the year, which is Father's Day. So we're prepared further than we've ever been prepared, kind of three months in advance. And we're super happy with the content that we've gotten and also where we are with our advertising. And so hopefully we can hit that market at the right time. We've also got, you know, launching kind of two new socks in the coming months quite soon. We're doing a large restock and we've got kind of 10 to 15 socks coming for Christmas, although that might change and hopefully we can get some more. If I look at our business performance overall, we are pretty happy with where we're at. 9% up across all of our channels. When you consider we don't have the fair incentive that we did have last year, incredible. Online store is up significantly and we think that's just kind of a, uh, not a hangover is the wrong word, but kind of a, a pullover from last year's uh, radio advertising that we were able to able to do. If I look across the different channels, online stores up 71%. That kind of makes up for our fare being down by so much, by 33%, which doesn't have those incentives again. In a B2B, we're trying to be a bit more metrics driven. So at a summarized funnel level, we were saying, okay, are we happy with these different metrics? Leads, not enough leads coming in. 
page views we weren't not really sure you know for our wholesalers is that the right amount of pages that we page views that we'd like to have um and our b2b is made up of fair and anchor store and then a few other smaller manual orders as well products that we're designing we still need to flesh out this section we'll get there eventually operations like i said kind of 0.8 hours I think it's supposed to be 0.8 days. 0.8 hours would be incredible if we could fulfill that quickly. But our fulfillment costs are too much right now. Our fulfillment's got picking, packing, postage. Um, and we've been trying, so we've done a lot of work to inc- decrease our shipping costs. If I look at the direct consumer business, I'm incredibly happy. We're probably over on our marketing spend, and that's gone through into other areas. So if I look at kind of, you know, 14,000 pounds um, revenue across the online store and we've spent nearly five. I'm not happy with that. And the rest of the other metrics, they're doing well. Conversion rate is halved compared to what we saw last year. Um, and then if I look at you know, returning customer rate, incredibly happy with that. Accounting, like I mentioned before, we just need to get that monthly accounting basis just absolutely nailed so that we can have a look on an accounting basis. Is this business working in the right ways that we'd like it to? And what can we do to improve it? So on a year-on-year basis, this is our revenue. It doesn't really make much sense to show it like this. And <laughs> we got that loud and clear from our board members. But we're really happy to see, you know, how has the business grown month on month over the past, you know, kind of three years. We are comfortable compared to where we were last year. I think last year was almost like thirteen thousand pounds. This year we're at seventeen thousand pounds. Um, Feb a bit down, and that was obviously due to the uh, decrease in sales from from fair and out and our wholesale providers but we're kind of there back in line 10 percent down on a month wholesale sales like i mentioned i'll probably skip over this slide but to give you a flavor it has been growing be really interesting as well if i could share with you the splits of where this wholesale business is coming from so at the moment most of it is from the fair marketplace and their customers that fair have found uh, for us and gotten for us and we earned them in last year when we went out and we got so we were able to acquire so many different types of businesses that hadn't typically um, bought socks before and so we were super happy to get them and, and that's kind of continuing to, to pay dividends on our direct consumer business we wanted to talk about a few key areas and to be honest there's a few areas that we haven't yet nailed I'd love to hear anyone's feedback, in particular on our funnel and our marketing calendar. I know that this is something that businesses must be doing. We need to get a bit better at that. So any examples, templates, please do feel free to share them. If I look across the business, 767 orders, we're up 38%. Sessions are up 30%. Returning customer rate is up 30%. Average order value, I can't split out if that's retail or wholesale, so it's actually the whole business, unfortunately. We don't have that level on Shopify to be able to split that out. Um, And look at, I think probably one of the most interesting areas is here on the right, sessions by traffic source. So search is way up, i.e. from Google, and social is way down, which I'm very surprised about, but it's just kind of the iOS 14 updates, which I think is just absolutely criminal for a small business. Conversion rate is up by almost a quarter. We've been doing a lot of work to increase the effectiveness of customers coming onto our platform and then them staying and then hopefully purchasing. So we've made it quicker. We try to be as fast as we can there. We've also reduced the size of images. Um, We've standardized the images so everything kind of looks the same and really just tried to get back into line with market. And we're really happy to say that we are in line with the fashion market. This marketing funnel is absolutely my least favorite slide, but also one of the most important slides. And so you can see how much was spent across the different channels, and we really need to change this. We've gone back to our board and said we're going to come back to them with a spend. And so we're going to start spending £2,000 a month across the different channels, mostly Facebook and Google, a little bit of Etsy. We've never been able to get Pinterest to work, not even in core periods. So we're going to actually remove that in total. Microsoft was a hangover from last year as a small business. We'd left it on by mistake and it actually went into into this year. So we're trying to really optimize, and this is what we shared with the board members around a 70-30% um, split. So 70% of our advertising budget, we want to be spending at the top of the funnel and getting customers into bear kind, and then 30% to mop up 
that with our you know search traffic as well as the campaigns from Facebook and Google that give us customers directly or are aiming to get to get sales for us I should say this was our marketing calendar kind of looking back as you can see I probably wouldn't say it's the most <laughs> Uh, intense and probably I imagine there's a lot of uh, better ways to do this but this is kind of the thing that works for us. Our charity impact report is probably the biggest part of our business and it's why we're here and why we exist. So we spend a lot of time kind of before March focusing on that. And then into March, we did a little bit of Mother's Day but not traditionally a massive sock sales. Um, Unfortunately, although mothers do have feet, thank God, uh, we don't really see a large uptick. And we're trying to get into a rhythm as well with our marketing calendar, running the business from both the retail and the wholesale business. We have some super exciting socks coming along the way. This is just a little bit, obviously we've got the rabbits, kind of spring slash Easter, that's the the angle we've gone for. We've got some new products coming, can't share them obviously, pretty much the only thing I can't share. Um, Father's Day, really happy with what we've got here on Father's Day and the imagery we're going to be using. So hopefully, um, as I like to say, that slaps. Um, I'm sure other people like to say that as well. And we're continuing to focus on what our core is, and that core is animal charities. If I look at the website, probably skip over what we're calling like our rag setter. So this is just kind of like what are we happy with in, in these individual areas and pages. Analytics has a long way to go. We're super proud to be talking in the same ilk as Happy Socks and the work that we're doing there, in particular on our performance. So we're a relatively small business. We run on Shopify and we make our pages with Bushra and myself. Um, And we've been incredibly performant. So 97% um, on our desktop. That's That's crazy compared to 79 for Happy Socks. And then Happy Socks are at 42 for their mobile and we're at 73. So there's definitely more work to be done there to get up to perfect, but we're in the right ballpark. This is, Lucy, I know Lucy's favorite um, favorite, favorite screen in the, in the board pack. And we're going to talk a little bit about wholesale. How are we going on at, across, like the, across the business as a dashboard? What does our funnel look like? Fair is a very important piece of our business and we've got a few we had a few items that we have for discussion that we wanted to take the board through so this is again what we call like our rag status and this is kind of something that we sit there and go okay are we comfortable with this area right now we know we can't get data behind all of this some of it we can get data for but it's not something that we've tried to do on a consistent basis just because of how long it takes us with time and so we've not we've stripped back the data from this dashboard and we just wanted to focus on a couple of areas across our proposition, retention and our acquisition of customers. Across the across the funnel, like I mentioned before, we're really weak currently on our leads. And so we're not doing any work to sell to customers as our own business. We need to improve this and that's what we've identified here. Our page views were pretty comfortable and our conversion rate is super strong, incredibly strong actually on FAIR at 7.1%. It was previously at 20%, but that was when we were sending customers to FAIR directly. Revenue needs to increase, but that's kind of something that we started to see an uptick as and when we got more customers on the marketplace. Our FAIR stats I probably won't bore you with too much information there. I think Lucy's got a few other videos and you can probably check them out later or just it'll be in the sidebar on the side, that much I'm sure. Our shop traffic is really starting to increase and that's as Fair is trying to get us more customers. And so we're seeing you know a few hundred customers sent to our pages every week, which is incredible. So thank you to Fair. We also wanted to upgrade our point of sale stands. So we previously had just a cardboard offering, which was okay, but... It cost us a little bit. I don't think many people loved it in comparison to this new wood product that we're bringing out. So this is some of the ones that we've got. Really excited to see these on shop floors. We've actually just completed our order today and they're going to be a bit more durable within our brand guidelines and we're going to have different sizes for different stores. Pricing will be higher but in comparison to the cardboard, but it's going to last longer, that much I'm for sure, and they're going to look great. So we've actually gone for this Lugano Oak, which is on the right. We're going to include them with larger orders, obviously for free, and if there's any small orders that we can include them in as well, we will. 
If I look at, um, there's, you know, I guess there's kind of the big three that we're going for, which are you know, the cute one, the small one, and the, the spinny one. That's the technical term. We were looking at a floor standing unit and a pegboard as well as a Christmas tree, but we really couldn't get it to work, not with the amount that we were um, being quoted. We've got, checked out quite a lot of different places across the industry. So big shout out to Point of Sale Displays. Um, we actually went to go visit them in Leicester. They were so nice. A guy called Chris, and I think it was John, came up, spent maybe four hours with Beth and I and we ran through every single different option that we could have worked through and we've come up with these three. But to give you and the board a sense, what are the other areas that we're looking at? So a Christmas tree, a floor standing unit and we'll get there as the business grows. We also wanted to move to a bare-kind owned sale system. So we were previously relying on FAIR's uh, CRM and that was great. It got us to a really great scale and that is an awesome product and if you really haven't checked it out, they kind of make everything there for free. But as we were moved towards a more of a sales oriented business, we wanted to own the sales systems ourselves. And so we're going to use HubSpot for that going forward. We reviewed a variety of different products, Salesforce, etc. But HubSpot was just the one that stood out for us because it just works. You've got the right scale. Um, it's super easy to integrate with Shopify and all of our other plugins like Slack. And you can then expand the business using HubSpot all the way up to enterprise level. Salesforce looks like a great tool and was probably the second runner up, but seems to be more enterprise uh, enterprise driven. So that's what we based our decisions on. And now we've kind of got that. We're starting to, to, to you know, kick up our lead generation and going out to, to business that we think would be a great fit for us. If you do know any businesses that you think would be a great fit for us, please do share with them. Um, you can obviously share them this video, maybe not, or, or just our website would probably work as well. We are also trying to build out um, in the wholesale business, there's two main channels. There's platforms and there's direct. Currently, direct is where I would say like legacy sock manufacturers and sellers do, and they have some type of relationship they own their software and they continue to sell to those individual customers and that's great but it is also super heavy in terms of workload and risk levels so typically they will own the um, credit risk of that customer potentially not paying we actually had our first customer go um, not pay us the other day and that was because they went um, a liquid thankfully they only owed us 55 pounds but they, they owed everybody else 504,000 pounds um but we'd like this is a channel we'd like to grow with no manual effort, no invoicing, and hopefully a lower credit risk. So that's something that we're looking at at the moment, and we've integrated with the store this month. Another area of the business that we've looked at is in particular with Thought, a few others, that they're doing um, pre-sales. And we went out to a few other, um, what would you call them, you know, stores and you know fashion fashion shows really and they were saying like yeah we're selling 70 percent of our stock before we've even ordered it and that is just the exact opposite of us from a working capital position it's something that we're looking to work on so we're scaling up the product roadmap we're getting the samples in once we're comfortable with them we're going to upload them we're going to start the pre-sales as soon as we can just to start to get that flywheel moving a bit quicker we are also probably at the point now where we've saturated most of the marketplaces. Um, we were happy to be introduced to Creo8. They've got a great platform and they're currently offering a, re a crazy incentive to businesses to, to start to purchase from them. So we're starting to see kind of 800, 900 thousand pound orders from some of our repeat customers. We never introduce uh, our marketplace customers that we've received from our other platforms to these. We only ever introduce our direct customers. And so we're expecting to get five to 10K probably from this platform over the next week or so and we're just really happy to be i guess in a position where it's not we're not just dependent on fair or just anchor store for example and so with career out in there bringing in a bit more competition we're super happy to see that q2 we're looking to launch pre-sales like i mentioned kicking up wholesale lead generation and starting to do some email wholesale email flow so you'll hear a bit more about that next week or next month i should say in terms of operations, we need to work on this, but as a first step, we're fulfilling our orders really quickly. Customers love us. We've got a five-star rating across most, if not all of our channels, and we work really hard to do that in our customer service business. 
But our, one of the things that we need to look at is what are we doing from inventory management? And that's something that we've not yet worked on. I know this is probably something that people have got coming out of their ears, but we haven't yet nailed. So if anyone's got any particular areas that they think they could help on with inventory management, we would be all ears. When things going out of stock, when are we making our next order? How many should we order? All these type of basic questions, we need to get a bit more uh, spicy on, I think. If I look at product, we're super happy to kind of be building out a more robust product roadmap. So we're looking at how many we can drop over the next kind of 6, 12, 18 months. And we think there's going to be a possibility to do a few drops in Christmas, which would be amazing. That would hopefully really um, support sales during our, our, our core period. And we're looking to change our designs as well. We've got our originals. We've got our ribbed. We're looking to do some other really fun, exciting ones. And we'll get them in the next couple of months. So, so watch this space. I can't share with you what they look like. But suffice to say, we'll get there. So that's pretty much it from today. I wanted to share with you guys a little bit about our business and I'm happy that we've been able to do that. So if there's anything that you would like us to see you know, in future months or if you think there's anything that we could improve on, then yeah, like, subscribe and follow for more. And if there's anything also, I've left a bunch of links down below which are on just kind of our affiliate links going to uh, if it's HubSpot, Fair, what have you. Um, some of them they're affiliated with, some of them we're not. We're just a growing business and we're just trying to find the best tools that, that we use and we just happen to share if you guys buy them. So thanks a lot. And yeah, stay tuned for next month's episode. Mm-hmm.